What's going on guys? Today we're going to be learning about how you can add realistic fog into any of your photos using Photoshop. So, let's get into it. What's going on guys? My name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and on this channel we talk all about Photoshop, photography, and video. So if that's something you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So of course today we're going to be talking about Photoshop and how you can add fog into your images. Now fog is sort of one of those things that can really add a little bit of extra mood or depth into your photos. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to create that fog completely in Photoshop. We don't have to have any external brushes or plugins or anything. So with that, let's get this fog creating underway. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. Once I create that new layer, I want to make sure that my foreground color here is set to black. So I'm just going to press D on my keyboard to set that to black. Next, I'm going to press Alt and Delete, and it will now fill my empty new layer with black. Now I'm just going to rename this to Fog. Next, I'm going to go up here to Filter, down here to Render, and right here to Clouds. It'll just create a random rendering of clouds onto our black layer. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to filter one more time and go to convert for smart filters. So we're going to be adding a Gaussian blur and a motion blur onto this fog and we want to be able to go back and adjust these values at any time. So that's why we're converting over our layer for smart filters. Now we want to apply those blurs. So the first one I'm going to add is the Gaussian blur. So I'm going to go up to filter down here to blur and then Gaussian blur. Now with my Gaussian blur box open, I can set this to whatever I want. Of course, the more you have, the more blurred your clouds are going to become, but I'm going to set mine right around eight. Then I'll just click OK. Next is I want to add a motion blur. So I'm going to go once again to filter down here to blur and then motion blur. Now with this, I'm going to just set my angle. So it's right around zero degrees. It doesn't have to be exact. So angle is at my angle is currently at two, as you can see. But now I can just play around with my distance. And of course, the more distance you have, the more skewed it's going to look. But for fog, I find that subtlety is the best. So I'm just going to stick right around 20 here and click OK. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we wanted to convert our layer into a smart object. So then we can go back and adjust any of our blurs afterwards. So just for example, if I wanted to adjust either my motion blur or my Gaussian blur, I can just double click on either one of them. And now the box will come up and I can do any adjustments I want once again. Now our fog is looking pretty good and we're wanting to now apply it onto our image, but we need to get rid of all of this black. Now that might seem like a little bit of a daunting task, but there's actually a really easy trick to it. What we can do is with our fog layer selected, we can go up to our layer blending mode here, change it from normal and then go down here to screen, which gets rid of all of the black in our image. Now I'm going to press command or control T to transform my fog layer and I'm going to right click and go down to perspective. Now we're going to change the perspective of our fog so it looks like it's sitting on the same plane as our lake in this case. So one thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure that your fog is well above the horizon so that you have lots of wiggle room to paint in your fog when we go to paint it along this lake edge over here. So with that, I'm just going to click the little checkbox to commit to this. Now that our fog is set to the plane we want it at, I'm going to add a layer mask to my fog layer and I'm going to press command or control I to invert my layer mask and make everything invisible on that layer. So now what we can do is with our black layer mask, we can paint white onto that layer mask to paint back in our fog. So the way that I like to go about this is I like to paint a thin line of fog here at a relatively high opacity so it's really visible. Then I usually go a little bit lighter and paint a bit wider, kind of like this. And then I'll go one more time and do sort of a general, really light covering of the fog around the area that we want to affect. So to start, what I'm going to do is with white as my active color, I'm going to go up to my opacity, change it down here to 50%. And I'm going to make a relatively small brush and I want to make sure that my hardness is set to zero. Now with this relatively small brush, I'm just going to go and paint this fog around where I'm wanting it to be, just on the edge of our lake here. So because our opacity is set to 50, it's going to be super visible, so you don't want to go crazy and paint it all over. Just paint it in the very specific spots that you need it. I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the outsides here.
So now with our first layer of fog in, I'm going to make my brush size about twice the size now, something about here. And I'm gonna change, I'm gonna half my opacity, so I'm not gonna to go to 25%. And once again, I'm just gonna paint over the exact same areas now with my larger brush. Now for the final piece, I'm just gonna make my brush about two times larger again and I'm going to bring my opacity just down a little bit to about 15%. Now I'm just going to do a broad and general fog adding. Now at this stage you can start to add fog a little bit more in the foreground and things like that to just sort of have it transition into the heavier fog. Now one thing I want you guys to remember is that since we're painting on a layer mask, if you accidentally add too much fog, you can always go back just by painting on black to your image. So let's just say I want to get a little bit of fog away from this little patch of snow here. So I'll just change my foreground color to black. Now I can go through and just I just have my brush at a 15% opacity, but I can just take away a little bit of that fog there just by adding a little bit of black onto our layer mask. So now turning that on and off, you can see the difference that we made. We've added a little bit more of a moody look to go along with the fog in the mountains here. Now one thing though that you might notice is the fog doesn't quite match up with the color of the rest of the image. Since this image is already edited, the white hue in this image is a little bit different than the white hue of our fog. So we want to adjust our fog so it matches with our image better. So it's really easy to do. All we have to do is to go to our color balance adjustment layer. I'm going to clip it to my fog layer. So now it will only affect my fog layer. And now just sticking in the midtones in this case, I'm just going to add a little bit of blue. So as you see now, it just helps that fog to blend in a little bit more. So if I turn that on and off, you can now see how the fog just blends into the image just that little bit better. So now just turning these on and off, you can see the difference that we have quickly and easily made to add a little bit of extra fog and mist and extra mood into our image. Now the thing that I want you guys to all keep in mind is you don't want to go too overboard with this because it does end up looking a little bit weird. When it comes to painting in fog in Photoshop, subtlety is the best option. So let's just do a quick review of what we went over in this tutorial. So the first thing we did is we created a new layer, filled it with black, and went up to filter, render, and clouds. Once we rendered those clouds, we converted that cloud layer into a smart object and then added two blurs onto our clouds, a Gaussian blur and a motion blur. Once we added those blurs, we transformed our clouds layer to be level with the plane of our water in the case of this image. And then once we were happy with that, we added a layer mask to our fog layer, inverted that layer mask so everything was invisible, and began to paint along our horizon. We started with a heavier brush along the horizon and then gradually went to a lighter opacity brush as the brushes got a little bit larger. After that, to make sure that the hue of our fog matches with the rest of our image, we added a color balance adjustment layer, clipped it to our fog, and then just added a little bit of blue to make it blend with the rest of the image that we're using today. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference, and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with all of my weekly tutorials. If you guys use this fog technique in any of your images, I'd love to see how it turns out, so make sure to tag me on Instagram at burnwills whenever you upload. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com, and I'll catch you next time.